I recently saw a post on Facebook. I don't know how it came into my feed, but I have it up on, I'm going to put up on the screen here and uh, I'll also read it. Uh, my wife, two young sons and I were in an elevator in Virginia. A woman walked in with a grocery bag and a handgun. My sons were terrified. After the woman exited, I reminded my boys in certain U.S. states, people openly carry their firearms. The boys responded, we want to go back to England. And so I thought about this, and it, it, it was absurd to me to read this. And then I realized, well, I have a certain worldview. I live, I live in the, the Rocky Mountain West where guns are kind of a, a way of life for, for most people. And, and then I realized there are a lot of people who aren't familiar with the uh, the gun culture, as it's sometimes called. I don't know that I would identify the culture that I live in as the gun culture, because from my perspective, I also have a fire extinguisher. I have multiple. I have one here in the shop uh, where I have my studio. I have another two in the house another in my summer office where I have a little wood stove. So I like to have a fire extinguisher there, but I wouldn't say that I, I live in a fire extinguisher culture. I simply think of a fire extinguisher as a thing, a, a tool for dealing with certain emergencies. And I, and I wouldn't say I'm an expert in using it, but if there's ever a fire, I think it would be really handy to have that tool that I, I have practiced with a little bit. It'd be really handy to have that tool to maybe help me save my own life or help the people around me uh, if they were at risk of being injured or killed in a fire. If this tool could help them somehow, I like the idea of having it. And this is how I view a defensive gun. Now, I own a lot of guns, and some of my guns are defensive guns. I bought them with the intent that maybe someday this item is something I would use as a tool to defend myself or others if attacked. Others are simply sporting tools. My long range rifle, for example, would be horrible in a, in a moral gunfight. You know, someone attacking me and then I am morally defending myself. It would be horrible for that but I really enjoy going out and shooting a target at a thousand yards or 2000 yards and, and the long range guns, they're really fun for that sport. Now sports, not for everyone, but that is something I sometimes enjoy doing as a, as a re recreational thing. So when I look at someone who is frightened of one of my defensive tools, be it a fire extinguisher or a handgun or a shotgun, I, I'm perplexed as to why this would be, frightening. Uh, just as a person who isn't a firefighter who carries a fire extinguisher down the street, I can't imagine a child looking at them and going, oh my gosh, this just makes me think that what if this person's going to start spraying me in the face and that that fire extinguisher material is toxic and it, I guess some of it freezes you and, and it's just, this is scary and this is horrible or they might hit somebody on the head with it. I would be perplexed that a, a kid would have been reared in such a way that his parents taught him, or a, I, I guess you could, don't allow or disallow people to feel emotions, but would have encouraged this child to feel the emotion of fear when they see somebody with a defensive tool. Now, can guns be used for very bad purposes? Absolutely. Can they be used to to kill people, to injure people. Yes, governments have used guns for this purpose for hundreds of years, and it's very sad. There have even been, and I know it's hardly worth mentioning if we're looking at it statistically, far fewer than 1% of people who have been killed uh, with guns uh, have had this, have been a victim in the, uh, in the private sector where, where it's not governments attacking them, shooting them, et cetera, but it does occasionally happen. And that is horrible when it does, just as people are stabbed with knives or hit with fire extinguishers, bludgeoned with them. I hate it when anyone initiates, initiates violence against anyone else. I think that is absolutely horrible, just horrible. However, when I think of this Facebook post that I saw, and I think about this woman who was walking around with a handgun, I have to wonder, 
what was in this woman's background? Before I would want my children to be frightened, what might be a story? What might have really happened behind this this woman's desire to carry a tool of defense? Had she perhaps been raped? And the average police response time, I live in the United States, the average police response time, whether you're rural or a city, whatever it is, is over 10 minutes. And in the county in which uh, I just moved from and my business is still in, it is nine minutes and 42 seconds. The average response time for the government in the event there's this horrible emergency taking place. This is why many people choose to have some personal protection tools like a handgun. If police response time was always, uh, even if it was five seconds, that's too long. You know, you, you think about how long it would take for, for somebody to run up to me, put a knife to my throat and say, hey, Shepard, give me all your money at an at ATM or something. So let me think, 1,001, 1,000, yeah, I didn't even get to 1,002. And I need a tool to defend myself. So in a second and a half, which is kind of what my countdown was, let's even give it two seconds. Even if somebody was, even if a police officer was watching with binoculars and was only a quarter mile away, they're not going to be there to help me. Only, only I can help myself. Now, am I really going to be able to? Like, am I really going to be able to do this hi karate kung fu thingy and, and grab the gun and hold it and then pull my gun or my pepper spray out and, and defend myself? I don't know. Sometimes, you know, if it happened 10 times, maybe I would be fortunate enough to be successful seven or eight or nine times, maybe 10. I'd probably fail some, as my suggested numbers suggest. But at least I would have this tool to defend myself. I can't guarantee that every time there's a house fire, my fire extinguisher will work. Maybe it's gone too far. Maybe it's too big of a fire. Maybe it won't work. But it seems that if I would tell a woman she can't have a, a tool to defend herself from being raped, wouldn't that make me kind of a nasty guy? I think about the horrible moral guilt that the, the Sikh suite and the owners and such of Google and Facebook that they must, maybe they don't feel it yet, but I think about if a woman was about to be raped, if she was going to be raped one second from now, and she was reaching for her gun to, to grab it, to defend herself, and I swatted her hand away and grabbed the gun and threw it in the lake so that she couldn't defend herself, can you imagine how guilty I should feel at making her helpless and waiting nine minutes and 42 seconds for help to arrive. That would be horrible of me to do that. Well, Google and Facebook and, and many other big companies, they don't allow people to provide the woman with this defensive tool. So whether it was one second before, as in, in my example, or one year before or 10 years before, when a woman is trying to get a tool to prevent herself from being raped, Gosh, I am sure glad that it will never be on my conscience that I have stopped a woman from doing this. So I've mentioned several things here. I'm kind of doing a, a scattering of various thoughts that I have, and I think many people who are proponents of private ownership of firearms, these are some ideas that we have. And when we put these all together, we come up with a conclusion that, yeah, maybe we do want to have a defensive tool. Now, uh, another consideration that, that I think is worth bringing up that many gun people, people in the gun culture believe, I do, is the, is the thought that no one is anti-gun. So if, if you are opposed to firearms and you think Dianne Feinstein and uh, Nancy Tulsi Gabbard or whomever in, in Arizona and, and the Newtown, every town for Newtown disarmament or whatever that organization is, if you think that those are all wonderful organizations and you think of yourself as being an anti-gun person, I would suggest that you are not anti-gun. You might be against individual people owning guns or carrying guns. And of course, it's no, there's no use to have a gun if you're not going to be able to have it with you to use it. So if you give me the right to own a gun, but it has to be locked away, that's, that's disingenuous. So, so those of us that do have guns, 
we are the ones who you don't want having them. You don't mind if Dianne Feinstein's bodyguard has one. Well, that's okay. And you don't mind if the U.S. government's military has them so that they can travel the world and, and kill brown people and keep the price of fuel low. That's okay with you. You're okay with police officers having them. You're okay with some security guards having them. You just don't want individuals, peaceful individuals, to have guns. That's really what anti-gun or common sense gun laws, that's what the philosophy is really about. And that that just occurs to me that it's it's a it's kind of a, a mean, bad way to think. My thinking would be if if you're really passionate about people not getting shot with guns, wouldn't the first group you would try to disarm be various militaries from around the world? Wouldn't the second be law enforcement, police officers and such? And then maybe the third would get down if you're looking at volume of numbers of people killed would be people who are in criminal gangs that that are in criminal gangs because whatever activity they want to do, they're not allowed to do in a free market. The government is preventing them. So that creates this high profit margin. And, and so then there's that often leads to black market um, behavior and people, you know, gangs being formed and people killing each other. Maybe that would be the order you would want, but, I, I find it hard to believe that the person who is watching this video right now, if you don't like the idea of me having a gun, wh why? What, what have I ever done to indicate that I would be violent? What, what about this, this woman who walked into the, was it an elevator? Yeah, walked into an elevator that had her groceries and, and her defensive tool. How, why would you want to take her defensive tool away? Now, I don't know exactly what the numbers are. I'm sure that people would argue one side and, and the other about, you know, uh, rapes are underreported and of the rapes that happen, of every 10 rapes, only three uh, were a situation in which a gun could have been used and the others were just circumstances wouldn't have allowed that defense anyway. And well, there aren't that many robberies. There aren't that many times that that violence is initiated that a person could use a gun leave it in the hands of law enforcement. They are trained professionals. Here's a little tip. Cops, by and large, are not very good shots. Uh, if I was going to form a, a pistol shooting team of the best shots, even in an emergency tactical situation, I would not pick from among, among a pool of police officers. I would probably pick machinists or some other uh, skill set, some other career but probably not law enforcement. So th there is a lot we've seen in the movies that all oh, cops are so good and, you know, they can shoot and make the bullet go around corners. And, and this isn't, this isn't the case that, you know, very few police officers are really good shots or are really safe with their guns. And so I, I don't see why that would be a group of people who we would say, let's wait nine minutes and 42 seconds for that group of people to arrive, and provided they weren't the the cowardly low lives that the police officers in Uvalde, Texas, were, if they were actual human beings with maybe a little bit of alpha in them, a little bit of a desire to help others, and like skip policy to save a life kind of thing, like I think any good human being would do, even if they were good people, do you really want to wait nine minutes and forty two seconds for them to arrive? I. I think that that's not wise. And now let's look at a comment that someone made, a couple comments to this Facebook post. And I do this just to say that it might sound ridiculous that the person who originally made this post made it and we could mock them and we could be mean to them, but I don't think we should because I think a lot of people come from a, 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 a worldview. They've had certain amounts of information from certain sources reach them that they they honestly believe this and they're not bad people. Like, I don't think the person who wrote this Facebook post is, is obtuse. Maybe they're ignorant because I think the difference would be obtuse would be willfully ignorant. Uh, I think this person just hasn't thought it through. I'm guessing that they would have an IQ high enough to understand it if they thought it through. Um, but they didn't. And, and here somebody's responded that also hasn't really thought things 
through very well. Um, I'll read this one as well. Uh, one of the single most reasons I love living in the Caribbean, call it what you want, but I prefer my children not to experience the things I see kids having to go through in the U.S. And then the original person who made the Facebook post says, it's all about the kids, isn't it? We've got to do what we feel is best for them. And then the person responds, exactly, on point. Well, there are many problems. If you're a, a philosopher, you've studied logic or reason, you see that these, these people are, are not thinkers, uh, but they're feelers. And then that's kind of what uh, I think the response was. We've got to do what we feel is best for them. I don't know who this we is. I'm assuming that Paul is referring to himself and to LaToya. So Paul and LaToya feel, feel that they should make decisions based on their feelings, other people might say that they think they should do things based on what they think. So this is a difference between feeling and thinking. So if we do look at statistics and we do look at the amount of psychological damage that's done when a person is a victim and they, they don't have any means of, of defending themselves versus a person who is attacked and is able to do some some work toward defending themselves, even if they're not successful in the long run, there is a psychological difference. So if we delved into the philosophy of this phenomenon, we would come up with certain answers, but those wouldn't be feelings. Those would be scientific data-driven thoughts uh, or, or conclusions. Isn't that what we would want to do to help children be safe? And I know everybody says, let's keep the children safe. It's used so much that it's just an easy out. But if we really truly do want children to be safe, then wouldn't we want to use scientific methods to come up with the best ways of keeping children safe? And I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are. You can't trust the pro-gun people, the the like the gun owners of America or the people that are eh, kind of sort of toward guns a little bit sometimes if it meets political stuff like the NRA. And you you can't trust the people who are anti-private ownership of guns. All of them are going to fund studies that come up with really twisted results. So, so I don't know what the real numbers are of how many children find guns in homes when the parents are using meth and they leave the gun out loaded on the dining room table with a, with a hammer cocked and then a five-year-old finds it. I don't know what those numbers are and I don't know what the suicide numbers are and I don't know the successful defense numbers and I don't know how we would even evaluate those. You know, if, if a kid, two kids find a gun that their parents were irresponsible with and they use this gun and they, they kill themselves. And then in another one circumstance, a woman successfully defends herself from being raped. I don't think I would be the person to say, well, I would have rather the woman have been raped and the two child, two children's lives saved. I don't think I'm qualified to make decisions like that. I would hope you don't think you're qualified either. I don't know how we would come up with that as a society as individuals in a society but it seems to me that the long and the short of this is as a gun owner it's up to me i need to be responsible there should be legal pencil penalties in a free market society whether it's dispute resolution organizations or insurance companies whatever it is there should be penalties for my sloppiness if i do something and as a result of my sloppy behavior a child dies there should be a consequence that I have to pay. And if I do something that prevents a woman from being able to use a gun to defend herself, there should be consequences for me. I guess what I'm getting at is there are a lot of different thoughts on this. And if you haven't explored some of these, I would ask that you do. Maybe watch this video again in a month or a year and, and see if you've had any I don't know, any changes in how you're thinking? Have you maybe started thinking you, you hate private ownership of guns more or you like the idea more? I don't know. But please do really think about it. And then I would ask you finally, just as a kind of matter of politeness, um, I'm not going to come and try to take any of your property away from you. I'm not going to initiate violence against you. And I would ask that you not do that to me either, please.